This is a picture of my dad, Justin. The day I sat down to write this talk about fatherlessness, I got a call saying that he had died unexpectedly from a heart attack. I'd not seen him in 20 years because he was an alcoholic and drug addict when I was growing up. And even though he wasn't in my life, I was consumed by grief. I was presented with the harsh reality that I'd never know what it feels like to have a father. An old version of me would have self-destructed upon hearing that news. I also would have turned to alcohol and drugs to soothe the little boy inside me who desperately needed his dad. And like so many men I've worked with, I'd have felt lost and projected the pain of that loss onto everyone around me. I've been lucky to find something that helped me overcome this challenge. Without it, I wouldn't have been able to come to terms with being fatherless. In fact, I don't think I'd be alive and standing on this stage today. Fatherlessness has taken me to some dark places, but it has also led me to become a leader in a global men's work movement that's trained over 10,000 men to date. In this work, I focus on guiding men through processing their trauma, connecting to their masculinity, and ultimately training them to become better men. Back when I was growing up, I was searching for a male role model, which led me to look up to the local gangsters, drug dealers, and men who didn't show emotion. I ended up getting involved in crime and nearly didn't make it out of my teenage years. In my 20s, my dad not being around continued to eat away at me, so I found comfort in addiction. My battle with fatherlessness came to a head one night in London. I'd been out partying, and often those nights would end with me disappearing, buying all the drugs I could, and wandering the streets. I felt so alone. I was confused why I was abusing myself, but I couldn't stop. I wiped the tears from my face and crept in the house while my family was sleeping. I remember going to lay down in the spare room, and my heart was beating so fast it felt like I was going to have a heart attack. As light started to come through the curtains, I pictured my heart stopping and my son coming in and finding me dead. What impact would that have on him? How would he feel growing up without a dad? At that moment, I was confronted by the truth. I was becoming my dad. I saw the cycle of fatherlessness being handed down to my son, and it made me want to cry for help. It made me feel that I didn't want to be alive anymore. I'd become the product of generations of fatherless men. My grandfather abandoned my dad when he was put up for adoption. My dad couldn't process the pain of being abandoned, so he turned to drink and drugs and abandoned me. And I had ended up here, on exactly the same cliff edge. I'm not alone. Did any of you grow up without a father or know someone who did? Nearly one in four children in the US alone will grow up without a father at home. That's roughly 17.8 million children. These children have four times the greater risk of poverty and more likely to commit crime or have behavioral issues. Men with absent fathers are also more likely to become absent fathers themselves, which means we are facing an intergenerational issue. The National Center of Fathering says, if fatherlessness was a disease, it would be an epidemic worthy of global attention. The thing I find interesting is that in my time working with men, those that grew up with a dad at home often say they're emotionally unavailable. I feel that in the absence of a father's love, presence, and guidance, men and boys are struggling. Can you remember what it felt like to be a child? How would you feel if one of your parents wasn't around? Regardless of the cause, I believe it's life-changing. 
How do you even start to overcome that? In my search for the answer, I came across men's work. I remember seeing this video of men running around in the woods, screaming and beating on their chests. I'll be honest, I had a lot of judgments. How would running around in the woods with a group of random dudes help me? I'm pleased to say there was a little bit more to it than that. I know now that men's work is when men come together with the intention of becoming better men. These gatherings create a safe space for us to process our emotions and learn how to embody healthy masculinity with the support of brotherhood. Men's work isn't a new concept. Back in the early 80s, a mythopoetic men's movement had started. It was pioneered by people like the author Robert Bly, who wrote the New York Times bestseller, Iron John, a book about men. It's said that these early men's gatherings took inspiration from Native American rituals. They were like rites of passage. Some indigenous cultures have specific rites of passage for men. These ceremonies can represent the transition from boyhood to manhood. They can serve as a threshold of when men must commit to certain standards and responsibilities to become a valuable member of the community. I believe that men's work is the modern day rite of passage that our men and boys desperately need. As time went on, that dull, empty pain that not having a dad had left me with started to shift. What was it about men's work that was making a difference? Was it processing my emotions? Was it the development of my self-awareness? Maybe it was my resilience growing through each experience. The truth is, it was something much simpler. It was connection. Connection is at the heart of men's work. When I was separated from my dad, it was connection to the very thing that I lost which put me back together. Connection to other men and my own masculinity. I've seen the same transformation in hundreds of men who experience that connection. I see men arrive down and out looking empty, and the next time I see them, they've completely changed. I see fathers who have difficult relationships with their children become present and fulfilled dads again. And time after time, I see men on the edge of suicide choose to live. The physician Vivek Murthy says, while loneliness has the potential to kill, connection has even more potential to heal. And that is exactly what I have experienced. Connection has helped me overcome fatherlessness. And I believe it can help all of us with the struggles we go through. What would it look like for you to find more connection in your life? Dad, if you're listening, I want you to know that even though you hurt me, I forgive you. I don't feel any anger or resentment because I see how generations of fatherlessness affected your life. I'm grateful that your life taught me how to be the father I never had. I'd love to spend some more time with you to do the simple things that fathers and sons do.